That was the best of the week that was our final week before a five-week break. And on our final show of our final week before our five-week break, we bust open the mailbag. Let's begin with a question from at JR, the boss man. In the aftermath of the Golden State Warriors beating the Boston Celtics last night after the Celtics were up 12 early, the Warriors blew the doors off of the Celtics and they never really got back into it. Which NFL dynasty would you compare the Warriors dynasty with? They have now won four championships in the last eight seasons. Shireen? I think I'm probably going to go with the team that's right there where they play, Mike, and that's the 49ers in the 80s because they had 81, 84, 80, 89. So over a nine-year period, they won four right there, and I know they ended up with more than that. But but the four in the 80s that, that they won made them the team of the decade, and I think that's sort of where the Warriors were are now with four titles in, in eight seasons. So I'm going to go with the team that plays right there where they play. See, the difference, though, is they got another one a couple of years later without their Steph Curry. They had another Steph Curry who was able to come in and get another one. I'm going to go with where they played last night, the Patriots, but not the full 20-year Patriots. I'm going to go more second half because, really, there's two halves to the Patriot dynasty. And the second half was – founded on excitement and offense. The first half was more about defense when they won their championships. Obviously, it started to morph into more offense after they won their three championships in four years. But I think more about this run that the Patriots had post-2012, 2013, when they kicked it into gear again and won three more. That, that to me, is the closest that the Warriors are if we're going to go apples to apples to the NFL. Yeah, that, and that's a pretty good comparison too, Mike. And in we've had so many great dynasties here in the NFL that you know you, you want to compare. Nobody compares, in my mind, nobody compares to the Patriots and what they've done for as long as they've done it. But they need to do it with another quarterback. Like you talked about, the 49ers did it with Steve Young after Joe Montana, somebody after Steph Curry. Patriots need to show that they can do it after Tom Brady, and they haven't done that yet. That That's something that, that remains for them to accomplish. And I've talked to Robert Kraft two or three times in interviews about him talking about we're going to be fine when Tom Brady leaves. We think we have the, the program, the organization in place, the coach in place, all of those things that we need to continue this. So now they need to prove that they can be the Patriots and the dynasty that they were without Tom Brady. Our good friend at a Red Zona UK from the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. Is there a chance that Sean Watson never plays again in the NFL? Is there a chance that that happens, Shereen? I say no, Mike, because he's young enough, and I I think he will play in the NFL. May not be this season. I don't know. May. May not be part of next season, I don't know, but I do think he plays again in the NFL, Mike. Now, now, look, if we're going to go literally like dumb and dumber, so you're saying there's a chance, there is a chance that he would never play in the NFL again because, for example, the 24th person who sued him was someone that his legal team had never heard of before. Well, that person could go to uh, a prosecutor, could, could go to a grand jury, could result in a criminal trial that could result in Deshaun Watson being convicted. There could be others out there that we don't know about. There is a chance that he'll never play in the NFL again because there's still a chance he'll be prosecuted, even though he was not indicted on 10 criminal complaints that were brought to grand juries earlier this year. So, yeah, there's a chance. Is it a likelihood? No, but there is a chance. And I think the bigger question is, if for some reason he doesn't play this year, you got two years out of football. Yeah. At, at, at what point have your skills eroded where you're never going to get them back to that highest possible level? It's a sport you play your whole life, and then all of a sudden you don't play it at all for two years. What are you going to be like in 2023 if you even play then or 2024? So I'd say there's a remote chance he never plays again. The real question is, how much more time does he miss before he plays again, and what impact will that have on his ability to play? At Tyler Hergert, what should we expect 
for Roger Goodell testifying before the U.S. House Oversight Committee on June 22. Shereen, what are you looking forward to hearing from him? Well, I want to see if he's going to actually answer the questions or if he's going to filibuster around and not really provide any true answers. And that's what I expect to happen, Mike. I don't know that we're going to get any good answers from him at this hearing, but uh, we'll, we'll see what he says. I know of one question that will be asked unrelated to the Washington investigation and how it was handled by the NFL and why the results were covered up. I've asked the question twice this week, and they haven't answered me. Well, they're going to have to answer whichever member of the committee asks Roger Goodell to explain how it is that Daniel Snyder isn't available to participate because he's involved in commanders-related business at a time when, according to the commissioner himself, Daniel Snyder should not be involved in commanders-related business. And and I, I, I asked the NFL... Am I missing something here? Help me understand this. Where are the parameters? Where are the contours? What's he allowed to do and not allowed to do? Maybe maybe this is permissible. I will interpret their silence to mean we would prefer not to answer the question because there is no good answer to the question. It's kind of how they deal with the questions I ask that they don't answer unless I ask them at least three times. Sometimes it takes more than that, but so far I've asked twice with no answer. The commissioner will be wise, Shireen, to answer that question the first time it's posed to him, and I assume it will be next Wednesday. Yeah, and it's a, it's a great question, and Daniel Snyder continues to serve on NFL committees, and we all know he was there when they unveiled their uniforms and new team name and all that, so we all expect that he still has a hand in the organization on a day-to-day basis. I, I just I I think he does. So that is probably the best question that's going to be asked in this thing, and the commissioner is going to be fully prepared probably to answer that question. But I don't know that there's a good answer for that because I think it's obvious that he's still involved in the day-to-day operations of the team and of the NFL. It's all been one big middle finger to everyone, the way that Snyder has, by all appearances, defied the terms of this non-suspension suspension and we should have known remember there was mixed reporting is he suspended or is he doing this voluntarily can he come back whenever he wants or does the commissioner have to approve it and it's just you know it's one of the reasons why they're all in this mess frankly because Snyder goes about doing things in my opinion I'm not saying it as a matter of fact I don't want to get sued especially during hiatus but uh, in my opinion this the way he handles his business has resulted in these complications that he always seems to endure. All right, one more before we break. Corey Joskowitz, what's the most athletic thing you have ever done, Shireen? You were regaling us not long ago of your, I don't know if you said it on the air or not, but the 250-yard no, drive that you hit, which is probably farther than I've ever hit a golf ball, wind or no wind. Yeah, I'm a big golfer, Mike, and I've been playing awfully well. I was on pace on Tuesday to shoot in the 70s, and my last five holes weren't that great, so I ended up with an 81. So, yeah, pretty good golfer, pretty good tennis player, both of those, I would say. I'm pretty athletic, so I, I can do most things. I was for the fir- At my school, I was the first four-letter winner, four different sports um, at, at my school to ever, to ever win four letters in wow. four different sports. Wow. Well, that is impressive. Uh, I got nothing to add to that. I have done nothing that is uh, (laughs) athletic. I I will will say this, though. I used to run a lot, and because of that, I can't run anymore. 1986, 4th of July, I ran a 10K, 6.2 miles in 38 minutes and 40 seconds, which I paid for. I paid for it dearly the rest of the day because my friends and I, we went to Pittsburgh, 4th of July, fireworks, all that stuff. Well, I, I had a, a, a serious intestinal complication from pounding the pavement for 6.2 miles in 38 minutes and 40 seconds. So I was carrying around a bottle of Pepto-Bismol in a brown paper bag because I needed it. Uh, and people would say, hey, what do you got in that bag? Oh, Pepto-Bismol. Well, yeah, sure it is. <laughs> you know, it, it is. It is. There was, there was much pink liquid consumed that day, and it was never mixed with anything else. Also, and this will surprise everyone out there who believes that I am completely and totally unathletic 
and that I am five foot three inches tall. Shireen can testify that I am at least five foot eight. I'm actually five eleven and three quarters. 1988, and I have a witness for this on a wooden indoor basketball court. I was never able to cleanly grab the the ball and hold it and palm it long enough to get to get it jammed through. I did though, and I've I, I should have I should have scarred myself. At once upon a time, I got my arm that high above the rim on a ten foot rim. Wow! Once upon a time, that's pretty. Impressive. I couldn't I couldn't get I, and my my friend and I we were both trying our damnedest. We wanted to dunk so bad. You know, one guy throws it up and the other one tries to get it. And you get it, the timing has to be just perfect when you can't. When you can't, you know, and you can't two-handed, it's so much harder to jump up with two hands on the ball. Anyway, I, I have a witness who will testify under oath that, yes, on a 10-foot rim, wooden floor, got it right there. I'll never forget that spot, but uh, I, I, I would remember it much more if I had actually been able to dunk the basketball. Let's take a break. We'll catch up on some Cowboys news, including a little trouble that Jerry Jones' team is in. Well, that's, that's uh, boy, they had that one ready to go. That's 135 pounds 20 times. 20 times. Sims Sims doesn't believe it's 135 pounds. It is. I have a witness for that, too. Both my wife and you'll see I have another witness who was in the room as I was cranking out the 20. There she is. Macy was wondering what in the hell is going on here. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back with more (laughs) PFT Live right after this. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.